Okay, all right. I think this is going to be a much less, um, much less somber talk. Um, I don't have values, I don't have activation functions, and certainly not p-values. Uh, but what I have, I think, is something that's probably, um, you know, something that we can all relate to, uh, something that we all know very well. Um, as for questions, I think uh, Abby gave me the perfect exit strategy. It actually reminded me, so she said, have your questions after the, you know, after the talk. So it, it reminded me of an anecdote, and the anecdote goes like this. So um, Einstein, when he was touring, uh, when he had just written E equals MC squared, he was touring all of Europe, and everybody wanted to see you know, what he had written. And everywhere he went, his driver would go with him. So it turns out that the driver at one point knew as much as Einstein did, so, or so he thought. So during one of these visits to some, you know, to some uh, university in the Alps, uh, his driver said, you know, why don't you let me be Einstein and you be my driver and you can go sit in the audience? Because, no, you know, you don't have Instagram, so no one knows what Einstein really looks like. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, you know, it so happens. So the driver gives a talk and it's very impressive. And then, you know, the Q&A starts, right? And somebody walks, uh, somebody gets up and asks this really esoteric question about antimatter properties. And this driver's like totally stumped, like I've never heard this thing, <laughs> you know, I'm just here. And then he did something brilliant. So he looked at the um, guy and he said, you know, sir, the answer to your question is so simple, even my driver can answer it. And points to <laughs> Einstein in the audience. <laughs> so uh, with that disclaimer, I'm gonna <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about the ticker plant for healthcare. You know, it's a bit, a bit of a different use of the ticker plant. Um, I had raised this, I'd mentioned this to Simon, Simon Garland, and then he said something like, to the man with the ticker plan, the world is a ticker plan. I didn't really understand what that meant, but even <laughs> probably still don't. Uh, so I just, I do want to acknowledge a few people, because I'll start showing the demos and I, will, I might forget. So Larry and Sai, they're the CEOs and the CTO of RX Data Science. Uh, Ed Beerley, who's here with us today, the star. Um, RX Data Science team, the KX team, and Vispy uh, developer, Luke Campagnola. So I'm going to show some uh, visualization packages that have been written by him in, in Python. So I wanted to acknowledge. So first off, some inconvenient truths. I really didn't want to get started with this slide, but then Abby said, get to the meat of it, even if it's not pleasant, which it isn't. But then you know, it is what it is. So 2.744248 million, what does that mean? You know, some of you might be going like, that's just how much I made last week. But then... <laughs> <laughs> But it's actually the number of people who die in the U.S. every year. That's 7,400 people per day. Today, there are 7,400 families who are mourning their lost loved ones. Um, that's more than all the political incidents in 1776, and there's so much investment in that. The next number is 1.861204. So that's the number of people um, who pass away from cardiovascular diseases, stroke, uh, respiratory diseases every two years. That's roughly 25.50 per day. And if you think of it, that's like a, you know, almost like a 9-11 happening in, in that world on a daily basis. To put this into context, that's roughly the size of, more than the size of Manhattan, being wiped out every two years because of stroke or some heart-related disease. Heart-related disease are, is the number one um, reason for mortality. So can we do anything? And this is a question that we had asked ourselves uh, when we first started. Um, and with a firm called RX Data Science, um, we actually did a presentation at JPM two years back, and um, it got successful. FD did a sizable investment, and that's how RX Data Science came to be. So the question was, if we can do early detection and diagnosis of conditions, uh, it can make a huge difference. Like, can we find out what's happening with an individual and, and treat those in time? Real-time patient analysis is an emerging market. So we work with a lot of clients, and it's really archaic. Like it's, it's like 80s in the finance world. Um, and our participation may be limited to our domains. Like we know financial stuff maybe, but then you know, we, we are not like medical experts. But perhaps we can still leverage the same technologies we use to make an impact. So with that, I'll switch to a short video actually we made to show the kind of domains where we can apply um, KX interestingly. Thank you. 
So the question we had asked ourselves was, can we collect all this information, right? So can we see on a day-to-day -day basis what's <coughs> happening with individuals? It's really useful, especially for patients uh, who are in, in hospital care and so on, to know what's happening and maybe make analysis, like real-time analysis on that data. So I'm going to quickly show um, uh, sort of an app. It's very straightforward, but uh, Sergey, who did the R interface, he, he helped out with, it, with the, you know, whole, with all the questions that we had. Um, it's basically like a Shiny app, right? So you all know our Shiny. Like that's the, that's the best I can do with like GUIs because that's the only thing I, I know. Uh, um, and what we wanted to do was sort of simulate, right? I can't get all the patient data, but can I simulate, you know, X number of patients. So what this screen shows <coughs> is you can select a, like a server host name, you can select different ML modules, uh, different protocols through which you, can, you would be collecting the data from the patients. The number of patients and the number of measurements per second, and it's going to generate all that data and we want to collect and analyze that. Now some of you may be thinking, you know, like this is just like a ticker plan and you know, we do a lot more sophisticated stuff. So let's start the sensor stream. And what this is doing right now is streaming data for two patients. And you can see that here. It's going to stream data for n number of patients um, into the KDB Plus database. So it's, it's, it's just collecting the data, right? So these are the number of values being recorded on a per, you know, generate on per second basis. It's 58 messages, but messages I really mean just the values, eight rows per second. There are four different tables. So there's a, there's a health table, there's a fitness table, a med device table, um, and then there's a basic data table. So it's got time sim, it's really the patient's, patient's identifier. Now, what was interesting was that, so these are patients and we're collecting their data in individual tables but we can keep going up. So let's say what happens if we go to like 94,000 patients. Now we are streaming data at the rate of 2.7 million messages per second, uh, updating the tables at the rate of 376,960 rows per second, but we can keep on going up. So it's like 14.7 million messages per second. At this point in time, at 534,000 patients, we have covered half of the US. Every, like half of the US beds in hospitals it's, it's, it's less than 534,000. And if we keep going up, we can go all the way up to like, you know, 884,000. So we're collecting the vitals for each patient from every single bed in the US. And then if we keep going up this like a future state, there's not a million, um, you know, beds in the US. But what, what you see here is we're collecting data at the rate of 29 million messages per second, four million rows per second. And what's interesting is that this is all happening on the Mac. So it's, this is local host. So, you know, when we showed to this, uh, we showed this to a very large pharmaceutical company um, and, um, and we had a very good audience. And one of them said as a, as a reason for not pursuing it was, this is too futuristic. <laughs> and, and that's a reason <laughs> to not do it. But anyway, I mean, it is what it is. But let's see what these, you know, tables contain, right? So this is the health table, which we have patient information, heart rate, systolic, diastolic, glucose, <coughs> etc. cetera. Um, the fitness table, which is going to have things like, you know, 
patient name, heart rate, steps, stairs, swimming. Uh, the med device one, which is like Fitbits, right? And well, no, this is actually slightly different. So this is all about this is about a patient who's in a hospice care, and the patient's wearing a knee sensor. It's like one of those commercial med devices. So you know, if you fall down or something, it detects that and it can send messages. So you know, uh, it's very very commonly used in pharma. But then, because you know, it's 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 a ticker plan, we can do all sorts of things. We can do moving averages. We can do regressions. I mean, that's pretty basic. But then, you know, you can still do it. And then, lastly, we can do something perhaps a bit more complex. For instance, and we predict uh, based on the acceleration, frontal, vertical, lateral, etc. If, if the patient's lying down, sitting on bed, standing up, or what's happening, the the place where this is useful is. You know, let's say if it's a patient, you know, elderly patient in care, and the patient falls down. If, if let's say, uh, during the moment of falling down, the patient's heart rate goes up and the BP goes up, that could be an indicator that something, you know, adverse might have happened. Versus the patient is lying down, and you know everything's normal. Maybe the patient's going to sleep. So this column is basically the predict column. But I won't belabor on that subject. This is where it's basically running H2O uh, and, and, and making these you know, things. But it's very, very trivial. Uh, but let's um, you know, stop the sensor stream. So this is the state at, in which we had this you know, until maybe like four or five months back. And then we thought, can we take this forward, like take this to the next step? It's all well and good to collect patient data, but you also need to do something with the patient data. So, uh, you know, with the limited capacities I have when it comes to these, you know, websites and stuff, I tried to put together some visualizations. So, uh, basically, what this is going to do is, it's going to pull up the patient data, and if you want to see data pertaining to, let's say, you know, their MRI records, can we pull that up too, right? And it's not easy to render them. So I just did like, you know, view patient data. This is the patient information. You can think of it as a physician in the hospital looking at a patient and want all the historical data, like the HDB for this particular patient. Um, but uh, using, uh, I'm using VisPy here, but using VisPy, we can take it another step forward. Like, can we visualize, let's say if we have all the MRI scans, can we visualize that? Um, in the same like uniform you know, integrated interface. So it turns out that uh, VisPy is sort of like a Python package, um, very, very useful. It uses GPU for rendering all, their, all, their, all the images. And you can do stuff like you can interact with the MRI scan. It's, it's very, very hard to do this. Like you would have seen pictures like this on the web, but they're usually static images. To be able to rotate and zoom in and get all that alpha blending is uh, it's a bit non-trivial. Uh, we can look at you know, EEG scans. So uh, this is generating, this is like a single patient, a thousand updates per second. But then you know, we thought, so that's one patient. What about like every patient in a, in, in a hospital? So, so that's like a thousand patients and their heart rates updating at the rate of 1,000 updates per second. So that's plotting one million points per second. So that was like a small hospital, and then we said, you know, maybe New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. So this is <laughs> updating at the rate of 10 million points per second, and this is like phenomenal. You know, things you can do with unused resources on a computer. <laughs> and lastly, you know, we thought, what's the like the ultimate goal, right? So I said that there's like 800,000 some beds in 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 U.S. hospitals, and the future state was like a million patients. And uh, this is a bit resource intensive, but that's basically plotting 100 million points per second. O on a Mac, like, you know, the CPU's like sleeping <laughs> using the GPUs. So I won't, you know, get too much into it because I don't know what's going to happen to the computer if I try too much. <laughs> so, and then you can, you know, of course, you can look at the data in the, in, in the database and stuff. And even when we just show this, like, you know, we have a billion patient records on a Mac, like, it borders on the, you know, like, do I believe or not believe, like, you know, what's going on here? And then they think, oh, it's like that Spark guy who came last week and said, I'm going to sell you this stuff and never worked. But anyhow. And then we thought, uh, can we take it another step forward? Like, you know, we have the data, we, we know everything, but the patient might not be there in the hospital. So 
if this works, because I'm using the phone for like a hotspot thing, uh, basically we should be, we are able to locate the patient and see where the patient is at, any, at a given point in time. So I presume that the network isn't really working that well. So, um, and I'm using like a hotspot to connect, but basically what this does is it shows me, um, I'll try it once again. So it's going to show me the location of the patient on a map and, um, okay, nice. So <laughs> even if it's half done, you know. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you can look at it. It is just like a simple JavaScript library for, you know, mapping and plotting maps. And you can look at where the patient is and then you can look at the closest hospitals to the patient. And then, so the hospitals are these yellow circles and if you want, you can dial the patient, et cetera, et cetera which is all well and good, but then, you know, like we keep thinking like, where can we take this next, right? Because you have to keep on improving. So um, one of the thoughts we had was, so now we know where the patient is, we know where the hospital is, we need to take the patient to the hospital. But there could be like 10 hospitals, so which is the closest one that, the, that we should take the patient to? Now this also depends on the network, but in case it doesn't render, basically what this does is that it just uses a very simple, we have the location, the addresses of, of all the hospitals in the US and, and all the um, clinics, et cetera, et cetera. And basically it's going to um, look at the, the, the fastest time to the nearest hospital and then you know, tell the patient or tell the caregiver that this is the way, this is the nearest hospital you need to go to in order to take the patient to, you know, for care. Um, and, and then there's another step beyond that, which I can't show. Uh, we thought, if, can we make it more global, right? So if the person's in, let's say, Germany and speaking German, and the patient is in France, uh, we can use the Google API translation services. So the person tells the caregiver something in German, and it gets translated in French. So you have a bi-directional communication in the <coughs> native tongues of two different people. So, um, you know, that was the, that was, uh, it's still a work in progress, but so, um, uh, so, you know, we, we show these things and then it's really up to the client to believe it or not believe it. And those who believe it, I think they're going to benefit from it. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Um, this is one last thing. We, you know, if you want to get involved, um, we are, um, we are, looking for people, so I, I took permission from Abby to say, you know, we are looking for people who have worked with HPC architectures, uh, distributed analysis, MATLAB, CUDA, Fortran. Yeah, this, they even use Fortran in Pharma, I was really surprised. And KDB Plus interfaces, of course. So if, you, if you're interested, please feel free to get in touch. So thank you very much. <laughs>